what is up guys now for those of you who are new to this channel my name is Holly and this is the first video of my car boot sales pickups videos so the car boot season is just about starting up and I am so excited to go out there and hunt for some video games so all being well I should be going to like every car boot every weekend around here so I'm hoping to bring you these pickups videos once every week so this Sunday the Morrisons car boot sale started up and it wasn't quite as busy as it usually gets throughout the season, but it's only the first one, obviously. So over the next few weeks, it'll start to pick up even more. So I mainly just saw PlayStation 2 games there, and I've picked up six games for just a pound each. So I'm about to show you these right now. So the first one, one of the favourites when I was a kid, is called Splashdown. Still has the original stickers on it. Truly a landmark title. PlayStation 2 Official Magazine UK, 9 out of 10 rated. But it's pretty funny because it's a 3 plus, the age rated, but it says parental advisory explicit content. I was thinking like, surely the previous owner of this didn't stick it on, but no, it seems to be like, you know, probably legit. And I give it some thought and I think that's probably from the soundtrack in the game. Maybe? That's all I can think of. A 3 plus game with this sticker on, like what the hell? But the main song in the opening title is SR71, right now. It is called. I know it has sex in the lyrics, but I don't know. I don't know, maybe because of that, or... So what if the sex was great? But I know Blink-182, the rock show's in it, and um, when it goes, we don't need anyone, a fucking explanation, it cuts that out, cuts that bit out. So, it's quite a lot of some swearing in this game, so yeah, I don't know. I just think it's really cool how it says 3 plus and then there's an explicit content sticker right next to it. This was a really cool title when it came out. Totally unique in the world of PS2 racing games, and to be fair, it was the first jet ski game I'd ever played. I think one of the only jet ski games I've ever played, the only other one I've played is Wave Race on the Nintendo 64 and that was brilliant for its time and like just like this one, this was really cool for the time it was out. Decent graphics, good locations, lovely bright colours and atmospheres, you know what I mean? Like it gives you like a feel good like feeling as you're playing through it and racing. And it's awesome that you can do tricks and stuff. I had a little go at this earlier and uh, I can't pull off the tricks like I used to when I was a kid. I tried to do them backflips and nah, I hit the waves when I was like mid backflip and all that. It's not working. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna start battering that again and get good at it again, just like I was when I was a kid. So I really think Splashdown is a proper hidden gem on the PS2, trust me. Next up we have Driver 3. And I've hardly ever played this. I can remember I cruised around on it years ago because my uncle had this game. I just literally cruised around on like the motorbikes and stuff just to, you know, see what the driving was like on the game. And uh, I actually whacked this on and I did a few missions and damn, it's quite hard. <laughs> Not even kidding. Because we've got it so easy nowadays. We have the regenerating health, but on here, your health bar goes down, that's it. You don't regenerate, bro. <laughs> We're back in the hard days, seriously. But what one thing I, I do find hard about this game, I played the first few missions and damn, like, they've taken me a few attempts because it's getting used to the, the driving of the cars. Like, I literally just nudged the analog stick and I did like a freaking U-turn, like, it's so sensitive and you have to kind of get used to how the cars drive and everything. So it takes a bit of getting used to to make your driving smoothly, you know what I mean? Like racing around the corners, chasing after people and whatever, like you have to do in the missions. And when you're getting in the action and shooting all the villains and stuff, I mean, the aiming has got to take a bit of getting used to for me anyway. You know what I mean? You, you're used to like just aiming down sight on Call of Duty, you just like press the left trigger and that's it, it just automatically aims for you, but on this you've got to like guide the analogue stick to try and work hard to get them damn headshots, man. <laughs> but when you do pull off the headshots, it's absolutely sick. So yeah, this is a real like blast from the past for me, like, you know, the style of shooting and everything. It takes some getting used to again. All right, next title. We have The Getaway, Black Monday. I'm surprised they even sold me this on the store because I, I don't even look 80. <laughs> I still look like jailbait. <laughs> and I have a confession, guys. I have not played this game. I've only played the first getaway and I had a little go of it and I was like, oh damn, it's so hard. Like, you know, back in the day. 
because I was like, oh my god, this is an adults game, it's so hard, and you know, I played it for a bit, but I just never really give it a proper chance, if you know what I mean, so I actually have the getaway on platinum, so I'm not going to end up keeping it, because for collector's sake, I don't want any platinum games, I just kind of want normal games, to be honest. So I need to pick up the original getaway, like this, like non platinum, to go with this, so I might have a little go on this, but I can't really get into it until I've completed the first getaway. I'd rather kind of go through in chronological order. So I can't give much of an opinion on this game yet, but it looks good. I mean, just even the back cover and the front cover, they, they look sick. I mean, on the back you got your serious phone call going on. Where I come from, we are driven by need, not desire. You are alive because I need you. And then they're all just chilling, looking badass on the front cover. So, artwork, great. <laughs> Next one, guys. SSX3. I've heard people say this game's a classic. Even my friends have said it as well. And, all right, another confession, guys. Another confession. I did not play it until yesterday when I had a little go of it. I've only ever played the original first one and SSX Tricky. I own SSX Tricky. But from what I played, I think this is going to be a sick game once you get into it. So... I'm ready to like start a new game on this. I'm gonna be smashing this. Looks very exciting and really cool graphics and stuff for the time it was made as well. What year was it made in? 2003, I think it says on here, if I've got it right. New music by Fatboy Slim, Nerd and More. Definitely gotta check this out. Got a 94% as well from PSM2 and I really love SSX Tricky. I've played that quite a lot over the years. So I'm really looking forward to properly jumping in this game and see what it's like. All right, guys, these next two titles, the, these next ones. <sighs> this is really annoying. All right, right, come get to know me. I'll, I'll tell you about me, right? Okay. I have anxiety and I'm quite an anxious person. And basically, uh, I, I don't know what made me not check the games. I don't know what. I just picked them up and I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'll grab these and stuff. And it was only until after the discs are fine and everything, everything's fine, but they had no instruction manuals. And I know, like, to, to a lot of you guys, it might not be a big deal or anything, but for the sake of collecting, for, for my OCD's sake, you know what I mean? I need the manuals in them, so it's really annoying. They do not have their manuals. So, I mean, I know there's only a quid each, but it's just my OCD, man. It's just ticking in my head. It's like, oh, Holm, you didn't check to see if everything was okay? And I don't know, my, my anxiety, I just had a bit of a moment where, like, I don't know. Sometimes, like, if the owner of the stall's looking at you and it's like, you want to, like, open the case, do you know what I mean? You just feel a bit... Well, I just feel a bit daft sometimes when I know I'm being looked at, when I know I'm being watched. I mean, I'm being watched now when I'm talking to a freaking camera. But, honestly, I have my anxious moments in public. I'm not gonna lie. So, I've learnt my lesson. First car boot of the season. I'm learning my lessons, alright? Go on, guys. You can give me a slap on the face. Seriously. <laughs> Hold. Check those discs. Check for those manuals. I can't believe I just picked them up without checking. But anyway, anyway. I'm planning to go to a retro game shop in Lincoln, I really love it, it's called Gotham Games. I'm planning to go maybe hopefully next weekend if I can manage to get down there and I don't know, I might see if they can hook me up with some instruction manuals but if not, I'll literally be giving these two titles away for friends and I'll have to rebuy them because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so the titles, James Bond 007 Nightfire with Pierce Brosnan in it. Oh. Honestly, I have proper cool memories of this game. When my uncle first got his PS2 years ago, this was like the first game he got with it and we were both absolutely blown away by it. Like, I never had a go of it like at first. Like, I just watched him play it and we were both honestly blown away. It was fantastic. Because right even at the start of the game, like, it gives you a taste of driving around the Aston Martin and all that. Aston Martin Vanquish, if I'm right. And then I think you have to kind of like infiltrate this place like go into a, a party or something like that you, you need to like get into this building like right near the start of the game and i just remember that really well so i'm really looking forward to jumping in this again guys so yeah honestly really solid james bond title for the playstation 2 and for the final title without the manual once again <laughs> is tomb raider anniversary I don't own any of the Tomb Raider games on PlayStation 2. On PlayStation 2, I do own the originals, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, from my experience, I really love the very first Tomb Raider, it's an absolute classic, and I've never actually played any of the PS2 ones, so I thought, you know what, I'll just grab it and just start the Lara Croft collection for the PlayStation 2, you know? So I got Anniversary, uh, it was a 9 out of 10, given by PlayStation Official Magazine UK. 
It looks pretty badass. It's got like freaking King Kong on the back cover and like a T-Rex as well. I don't know if you can see. So it does look proper good. Games Master. I think that was a magazine as well. Lara's back in her greatest ever game. So yeah, booty looking on point on the cover as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what the PS2 titles are like, so I'll definitely be giving this a try. I don't think anything will ever beat the original one. I've played Tomb Raider Definitive Edition and Rise of the Tomb Raider on the Xbox One, and I absolutely love both of them games, but for classic factors, seriously, and you know, the, the polygon breasts and all that, and polygon booty. <laughs> right now, I love the very first one on PlayStation 1. that wraps it up for my pickups from the very first car boot sale also just to, to mention i've been after bmx triple x for ages man and i found it for a pound on the store right picked it up i checked the disc thank god and the only problem was the disc had like a very deep scratch it was coming like from the center to the middle of the disc it was a very deep scratch and then if it like kind of digs in the scratch you know it's like a deep scratch and it's probably not going to play or at least not play smoothly you might not even get past the first menu or it might just not play completely so it obviously was not going to play so i was really gutted for that so i'll hopefully pick that one up another time i did spot one playstation one game it was shadow man it was two pound but it was without the instructions so i do want my games complete just for the sake of collecting do you know what i mean because i am collecting retro video games you know from like the, the consoles i do have right now like the sega mega drive snes nintendo 64 and i'm also collecting for playstation 1 2 even xbox 360 and everything so i'm literally looking for any types of games at these car boot sales but it's even sweeter if i do find some really retro games because they're even rarer to find nowadays but the most common are ps2 games on these usually so overall i'm really happy with the ps2 pickups and i'm looking forward to going to the next car boots do any of you guys go to car boots anyone in the uk or flea markets i think you call them in america let me know let me know what you guys pick up so guys i'll be bringing you another car boot sales pickups video very soon take care and i'll see you in a bit